So I think that the Lord in his, in his providence has led us to this kind of text, perfect timing in light of the recent Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriage. So whatever you believe about that, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, um, the, the Christian vision for sexuality and a Christian vision for marriage is, is now, whether you like it or not, it is now more foreign, more distasteful to our culture. So the question is, if you're going to uphold a Christian vision of sexuality and marriage, then uh, how do you respond when your culture hates you for it? And I think Paul would say, with blessing, with endurance, with entreating, with love. Ask the question, what does love require of me? And that's not going to change the persecution. Uh, it, it didn't change in the first century. The first century Christians were persecuted because of their claim that Jesus was the only way to heaven. And in and, and a pluralistic society, that was distasteful, and so they were persecuted. And it took 300 years for the Christian church to finally turn things around and stop the persecution. So it may be that, you know, Things happen in America where the Christian voice gets persecuted and, and, it's, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that if you'll respond with love then the persecution will stop. It may not stop. But it will change the way that the people who are persecuting you think about you. If you respond in love, it'll change the way you're perceived and it'll change the effectiveness of the gospel in a post-Christian society if Christian people actually respond the way that Jesus would have responded so I, I read a quote on Facebook the other day that I think that we should embrace um, as a church and embrace as individuals two types of churches will be ineffective moving forward those who've given up on the truth of the scriptures including on marriage and sexuality will have nothing to say to a fallen world but a church that screams with outrage at those who disagree will also have nothing to say to those who are looking for new birth we must stand with conviction and with kindness, with truth and with grace. We must hold to our views and love those who hate us for them. We must not only speak Christian truths, we must speak with a Christian tone. We must say what Jesus has revealed and do so the way Jesus does, with mercy and an invitation to new life. I think that's a vision for the future in a post-Christian culture. Uh, it was interesting on Friday, trending on Facebook was the hashtag love wins. Somebody said, it looks like my Facebook had a fight between a Confederate flag and a bag of Skittles. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, but you had this hashtag love wins. And what does love require of us? Well, love requires truth. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, it rejoices in the truth. But love is also patient, it's also kind. It's not seeking its own way, it's not demanding its rights. But if love requires truth, then you can't retreat on the truth. And God has a design for marriage, and he has a design for sexuality. But neither do we have any authority to hold non-Christian people to a Christian standard. You're going to see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. What business do we have judging those outside the church? The answer is none. It's those inside the church which you're to hold accountable. And so you hold fast to the truth, yes, but you hold firm to love and to grace. You reveal the worldview of Jesus and the worldview of Jesus is that marriage is between one man and one woman for one lifetime. But you reveal that worldview in the tone that Jesus had, which was full of grace and truth. And I'm saying if we'll do that, yeah, we may be persecuted and we're probably gonna be socially maligned, but we'll honor Jesus Christ and we will not bring shame to the gospel and we will open up the possibility that people who pursued the sexual revolution and the sexual liberties thereof and found it to be empty and broken, we will have a door open because we haven't ostracized them with hate and they can come into a place like this and find healing and hope for a future. And, and it takes great wisdom and discernment to do that well. So as